there was right, no you, actual dedication of love. It was just like, ah, you know, hey, say, cut, quit your complaining. Everyone's watching. You know I love you. Or an old-fashioned Regan. You too. Mm-hmm. I love you. You, you too. You too. You too. If you, ever, you ever need someone to say I love you to you one day, <laughs> take these two words and use them. Because uh, I can't express myself. Uh, I'm too. an idiot. Girth units. Back at ya. <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, ma'am. Goodbye. Yeah, that's how you can tell how good a comic, uh, how good a comic a guy is, is how much you think about him a day. How much his bits you think about it. Like, I think about Brian Regan bits three times a week. Just in life. Like, I'll get out of cab, have a good trip, you too. You're just like, fucking Brian Regan. He had a great take on his own stand-up. And he said, he likes to picture all of us leaving the, like, hack mine. Like a mine of just hack premises and just looking at him taking our goggles off and covering in soot like there's nothing left. And he goes, right. and that's when I go in. Oh, that's funny. I thought that's pretty badass. Yeah, I like when guys are like a humble guy like him is kind of cocky like that. Not cocky like, but just like, no, I'm good in that way. He, so you went out in 90, in 2002 is when you really said, yeah, uh, oh, was it like coming out of the closet where you go, oh, I'm a comic. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is even when I was like doing other shit, I would just go to the laugh factory and hang out with you and Chappelle. Do you want to come out of the closet on this podcast? (laughs) Like, like it's Paula Todd glass. Yeah. That'd be some Uh, good traction. Uh, the, the, yeah, no, I would, I love comedy club. Yeah. I just like being a comic. Like I work, like we know each other because I was going to NYU and started working the door to comedy club in 91, 92. And was just like, I really prefer this. Like I'm a fucking gym rat. I still would rather, if I can go, there's not, even when people go, uh, why, if, when I was directing movies, people go like, why are you here? It's like, cause I like comedy. I didn't get into comedy to get out of comedy. Like I'm here. It's cause I like this to me is comedy. It's the, it's the, it's like a, Comedy clubs have a constant audience that you can go and test shit out. It's fucking great. You don't have to worry. You don't have to post it. You don't have to wait for the emails to come in. You don't have to wait. But you, you direct a movie or write a movie or even – Chappelle Show was a quick response where we'd do a sketch and two weeks later it would air. And then the next day it would either – you would get the echo back. Yeah. But that's the great thing about comedy clubs is like it's fucking instant. Just like that's funny. That's not funny. That's funny. That's not – and I like the fact – I also am flattered that I can get on at comedy clubs. Yeah. I'm excited to be able to get on. Like, like that's the, whereas a guy like you or older guys, you're an older guy, not older, but more experienced guys, just you're used to stuff. I'm still curious about it. Yeah. I'm still excited about it. I'm still flattered by it when I'm the closer on a show. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's fucking awesome. That, that means, uh, <laughs> where I should be, where it's like you're 38 and you get, you did good. You are, don't you, don't you know? Yeah. It's like, no, I know I can do that stuff, but I'm, this is the thing to me. This is like the fucking, the trench warfare. This is the thing I want to get, this is the thing that means something to me. Well, it's real. Yeah. And it's immediate, like you said. It's like when you run at something up the flagpole, the flagpole's in the room. And yeah. It, and it's not long. Yeah. It's <laughs> not long. You don't have to filter it, you don't have to ask permission. You can just go. You don't have to submit it beforehand. You don't, you just go like, I'm thinking this. Here's what I think. Uh, and then people either reject it or accept it. And there's no, there's no real politics to it. There's no real like, well, we had a guy in here earlier who had something similar. Just all the showbiz excuses you get that are just fucking that after a while it's, you know, and I brought this analogy up in terms of working the road because like, People aren't don't really want to book me, but everywhere I've gone, I've sold out, and I'm kind of like, okay, I'm tell I don't know why I'm selling out. It's either I have a lot of Twitter followers or Chappelle Show or some or everything together or the TV shit or whatever. But I don't. Uh, what I'm saying is, I know I'm pretty, and you guys are going like, eh, we're not going to enter you in our beauty competition. It's like. Dude, I know I'm pretty. Stop fucking saying I'm not pretty. Are you having problems getting booked? Yes. Really? I mean, yeah. Like, it's not, it's not, they're was, not, they're not throwing it at me. It's every, you know. I was so relieved personally when I saw you on George Lopez come out and actually kill. Yeah. Cause it's one of those situations where, where like, you walk out and it's this cringe moment of like, yeah. oh no, like, this poor guy. <laughs> He's just been hanging out in comedy clubs yeah. so long. He thinks yeah. he's up. 
And then you went out and I, I, I was like, I really got happy. Like, oh, fuck yeah. Mint, That's the li- one mint, Bill Little Burr, Minty's all little, grown up. When Bill Burr auditioned for Chappelle's show, he auditioned for Sketch. And uh, he was good in the audition. And Chappelle looks at me and goes, thank fucking God. Just like, thank God this guy. Like, I don't have to avoid this guy's. I really like this guy. Uh, and I don't want to have in my head because you knew him from yeah we the knew clubs. him from the clubs oh, and he Chabelle was like I don't want to have it in my head like uh fucking guy can't act uh, and that's the thing with stand up it's like when people go it's like I could have gone people were like you should go out and do a Neil Brennan and friend thing it's like no I'm gonna this is five years ago right after Chabelle I'm like no let me earn let me figure out how to do it well get an hour and then go out. And now I'm at the hour, and people are like, "Well, we didn't even know you did stand up. We didn't even feel it was a long time ago." There's all this stuff. It's like, and they're like, "You should do a half hour in Comedy Central." I was like, "I'm gonna do it, but I'm still gonna be less known for the half hour than for Chappelle's show." So right. all this fake shit you're throwing in my way in terms of like obstacles that I need to overcome are I've already whether you guys know it or not. I don't expect clubs to realize like, yeah, you know who we need more here co-creators <laughs> like i it's what's my uh, dj's name <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, cut, yeah like cre- they're not creators need, yeah they're not uh, there's we not a lot of creators. guys coming from uh television shows and then going trying to headline what's darren star doing we got to get him you in know this who company. we need <laughs> but you know who we need in here for michael patrick king ladies and gentlemen do you know can we get one of the guys from cops where's matt where's, where's <laughs> can we get a uh, fucking fuck? What's uh, the guy's you name? You can hear our fucking Bagley, gears Bagley, smashing Bagley together Warner or some shit. We need to get fucking Bagley out here. Do you want so I get that, but again, I have a lot of Twitter followers just from being funny on Twitter. Like you just fucking get everyone listening to this podcast just rip their Dre Beats headphones off their head, listening to our gears grind in our ah, heads, trying exactly. to find fucking co-creators. Yeah. I'm like, is it Matt? <laughs> is it Max? Yeah. Cohen and Car- can Cup we get check? Marcy Carcy out here? Marcy Carcy, yeah. <laughs> Let's get Ryan Shiraki and Marcy Klein. Yeah, exactly. So, on. uh, so yeah, so that's the, uh, I get it, but I'm not, I'm also like not trying to rip people off. I'll take a door deal, but if I, it's like, I, I'll bet on myself. And if I don't, if people don't show up, fuck me. If I stink, I stink, but the don't shows pay are me. good. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. You're smart. Shows are good. That's what I do. I never had, when I started doing door deals, they said, you know, when Katz goes, well, what's your guarantee going to be at the bottom end? I go, I don't want a guarantee. I, yeah. If it, no one shows up, yeah, I don't want some guy you. to scratch a fucking check like I got over on him. Yeah, exactly. Like, just, you know what? I'll perform for the waitresses and let's get out of here. Yeah. did And you generally people showed up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I and, think you, and, yeah. and you didn't – you probably weren't sure why. Were you? Did you know why? Well, this is where we'll get into the psychology of our relationship. I always wondered why more people aren't coming. I always wondered right. why I'm not more famous than I was. Like after Jerry Maguire and Picture Perfect, I thought that equaled, boom, you know, like something bigger than, you know, like Cherry Fault. Go was a real fun movie to do and right. I would do it a billion times. Yeah. But I always – It's a good movie. It's something about me specific. Like sometimes – like Kevin – I think being a comic, there's sort of like a governor on the engine is how much people can look at you as like an actor actor. Right. And people go, well, that role went to Matt da- – long time ago. They'd say like, well, that role went to Matt Damon. And I would go, who's Matt – this how long ago? Yeah, like, yeah. Who's Matt Damon? They go, he had a great scene in yeah, the and, Meg Ryan yeah. movie. And I'm like, I just did six movies. Like fuck his scene. Yeah. So I always want – I'm always the guy looking at the you know, 1,200-seat theater and I look at those 200 empty seats and I'm like, why wouldn't these people come out? Yeah. Oh, no, crazy. I think – I agree with you on that. Like meaning – I'm not saying I'm curious as to why. I know why. But it's – it's when the club owners barely let me in. I just did a weekend in Arlington, Virginia, right? Uh, the draft house. Sell at both shows before doors open. No walk-ups. Sold out. Uh, so I'm thinking, oh, I promoted on Fallon. I fucking whatever. I'll get a bonus. No bonus in my contract. I, when I got back to the hotel, I was like, I'm not getting a fucking bonus for selling 600 seats. Fucking, uh, and, and, and then I, and then I talked to my agents yesterday and they're like, we, it, we booked it a while ago. And they, so I'm like, Oh, nobody respects me. We and the it. audience, like, yeah. it's, that's the thing about comedy is like the live comedy is like, we're cutting out the middleman, but then you, you think that. And then here come the bookers. You're like, motherfucker. Now I have to convince you, but I've already convinced the crowd. The crowd's going to show up. Yeah. I know they will. 
Uh, and it's just demoralizing. And it doesn't translate from market to market at all. Like you can't tell a guy in San Jose, I just sold out in Arlington. He'll say, that doesn't matter here. This is no, San I know. Jose. Well, well, that's the, but that's bullshit. Meaning. Oh, I know. No, it, but they'll go, well, Arlington, like well, how we many? Have the Sharks. The Sharks play across the street. <laughs> yeah, no. And if the Sharks are at home, they're yeah, going to no, kill you. That's, that's I'm a like, tough no, weekend. they won't. I'm doing, co- those are season ticket holders. Yeah. It's a tough sell. You're a tough sell this weekend. Uh, uh, you know, it's Memorial. You know, you, here's a sad story. The guy, Keith Stubbs, runs um, Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. Yeah. It's a fun room. Yeah. I love Salt Lake me. City. Huh? I'm sure he won't book me. He Go will ahead. now. You're yeah, in. Maybe. I'll make a call. He's that fucking prick. That stuttering fucking prick. <laughs> And I was doing Denver and I was like, I don't want to just go out on the road for a weekend like a, you know, like a ham and egger. I want to like string it together, make it, you know, right. I want to stay out a little bit. Yeah. If I'm going to take my wife and my baby to another yeah. town, let's just stay out. Really and show them an awful way of life. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I want to show your wife and kids an awful, an awful Tin situation. Tin Pan Alley. Dance. Yeah. Dance. Is this what you wanted, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> so I could do the count. I call Keith Stubbs and I go, I got, I need you to put me in after Denver. He goes, it's Memorial Day weekend, sweetheart. And I go, so what? And he goes, that's ah, really bad weekend. I go, so, all right, I'll take 5,000 off of, that's not a door deal. That's right. a, a price. I go, I'll take 5,000 off. He goes, it's a really, I go, what? You're telling me every Mormon is going to the fucking river that day? Yeah, what are they going to be doing? Yeah. Every Mormon went to the river that day. Oh, that's <laughs> it <hilarious>. was horrible. <laughs> you just did a one nighter? No, I was there for a weekend. It was like, you know, a hundred people and it seats like 300, but every night you're just going, oh, this poor, every night I'm like, this poor guy and his wife, they're super Mormon. Right. Like the wife bakes you cakes. The green room has like cakes and yeah. like these amazing pies and they're just kind and oh, we'll watch the baby. Yeah. Why don't you and your wife go out? Like I just met, the, you know, and they're like, we'll watch, totally like, you and not they baptize the baby Mormon. Go no, ahead. nothing creepy at all. Like an actual, just like, holy shit, there might be something to these people. All right. they care about are being nice. Yeah. And I've been bashing them my whole life. And yeah. apparently they have, this city looks like fucking Gattaca compared to the rest of the world. Salt Lake City is just yeah. clean. Yeah. It's like, like Singapore or something? It's incredible. Yeah. So uh I felt super bad. So now I- – Yeah. No, I've had – like I I haven't done uh, – the only time I've, people haven't shown up has been like real weird. Every Mormon went to the river that weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's every – and every night during your – 7.30 and then they went again at 9.30. Oh. <laughs> I, what are uh, the odds? You said something for 70% odds that they all went out. <laughs> yeah. You said something before we started. I said, uh, cause you sent me a text saying, Hey, I, you know, let's do the podcast and I can talk about how you harangued me all through the nineties. Yeah. And, um, I knew it well after, like immediately after basically you moved out. Right. I knew, well, that's no way to treat a guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, uh, and, and I, Neil's having said to- that we only lived together for like a month, but it's one of these months that's just indelible. It felt like a year. I really rode you hard. You slept on the futon on my St. Mark's apartment. We lived next door to Eddie Brill. Yes. And I, I can remember like opening the door. Here's like something I remember. Talk about an indelible thing that I go – like if it was NAA, like make amends thing, mm-hmm. I'll make – look, I – there's no way to treat a guy and I apologize. Oh, no. I appreciate that. It's horrible. Yeah. But I will say this. We'll get to it later. But the, the joke I played on Kevin, your brother – when I saw you guys, I wasn't here for that. I saw yeah. your family in the middle of like, I mean, Bakersfield, like nowhere. Yeah. Like somebody's, your sister got married. Or they were here got for married. a wedding of some kind. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a second. I'll write it down. But <laughs> I remember standing, I remember saying to you, where are you going to sleep tonight, Neil? Where are you going to sleep? And standing with the door open going, you can just fucking take your shit and get out. Cause that's my futon. That's the, and I named, and I go, that's my stove. That's my, and I pointed to everything in the apartment. Yeah. That's my shitty painting that my friend made that I got to put up in case he comes over. Those are my records. Yeah. That's my answering machine. So where the fuck are you going to sleep, Neil? Yeah, what was your angle? That is a, a, an interesting – because I don't know if you asked on the air, but like what you were getting at. Like what you're what – because you're, I took uh, – anyway, we'll get it. But I'm curious as to what your – what was your brain telling you to be like and I, why were you being like that? I, uh, I think part of it is mania. Right. Like I would agree with that. A manic spell. Yeah. A lot of, and then I thought of this the moment you asked me that before we came on the air. I, I knew it the second you said it, which was, uh, that being the young, always being the youngest, the youngest guy in the neighborhood, the youngest guy by two years on every team, uh, you know, being a freshman, 
you know, starter on a wrestling team, baseball right. team, being a 16 year old doing clubs, doing comedy, being two years younger. Are you about to give yourself an award? Go ahead. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Peabody Award. P- it's not the Peabody Award, it's one they do up in Peabody. Massachusetts. It's the Peabody Award. <laughs> give him the fucking Peabody Award and move on. This is retarded. Uh, I think that once, and we've talked about this a lot on the podcast, when you, Patrice and I actually talked about it, when you leave New Jerry Maguire and come back, you have to hand in that fucking Napoleon complex. You've right. made it. When you've done Saturday Night Live, you can't complain 